Today, we have the opportunity to look at a completely raw, unfinished Time ADHX 45. So one of the things that Time do is they provide their frames and what they call RTP, ready to paint. Now, we did a video a little while ago where we showed you the whole painting process, but we didn't really show you just what these frames actually look like in the flesh, even though we waxed lyrical about the quality. So today, I thought we'd get the IPA out, and there's a reason for that I'll show you in a second, and really show you in detail like how these frames are constructed, because it is absolutely fascinating. Now, the ADHX is part of the Alp Duez family, so it's essentially the same triangle, and they add in different rear triangles and different forks to make it into the gravel bike, and the sort of the extended gravel bike that you can see here with the wider tire clearance. Anyway, let's have a really close look at this. Now, when you get this, it looks like just a boring, dull, carbon you don't see that lovely sort of gloss lacquer um, that you see on these but they don't hide away from how these frames are made now if i just spray this what you can see here is how they've actually constructed this fork it's lovely it's really satisfying when you spray in the ipa and you can see the weave of the carbon come through so if you haven't seen the videos before how time make their bikes is they take individual strands of carbon rather than layers of sheep prepreg. Anyway, they weave it together a bit like how you'd weave a sock or a pair of stockings or something. And then they pull it over a wax mandrel. And then that wax mandrel goes into a big metal mold and they inject uh, resin through that mold at quite a high pressure, like 45, 50 PSI. So you would get all the air out. It's almost like bleeding a break. So you don't get any voids in there at all. So you just get this beautiful look, but you also get to see how it is being constructed. So you can see how this one sock here has then been stitched and then joined to the sock joining in this direction and it lays in the mold like that. But when you come down to the more intricate details of this, this is fascinating because these dropouts here are actually molded. You can see how they've used parts of a molded carbon to create this really intricate detail of this, it makes a really, really strong join. Now these are actually bolted in place and glued. So if you look really carefully, you can just see here the screw head. And on some time frames, you can actually just see that screw head just showing sometimes where it's actually being bolted, then covered over just to reinforce that joint even more. It's a really beautiful detail. This back triangle is made separately to the main triangle. So you can see where the joins are. So this is all one piece. And what I like is you can kind of see the slightly organic nature of where the resin's been pulled through and it's just slightly manipulated the individual carbon strains so it's not uniformly perfect so this rear triangle is made independently and then bonded into this main triangle here and if we look inside the frame we get a glimpse as to how that process works because inside this bottom bracket you can now see how that has been glued and bonded in inside here. So it's a big section, it's about an inch worth of bonded material in here. So it's a really good strong bond and the same up here, they have definitely given a really good area for that. When it comes to the bottom bracket on time bikes, how they actually construct this is slightly differently. So again, it all goes into this big mold with big sort of wax mandrels on the inside. And in fact, on these ones here, you can run your fingernail down and you can normally scrape off a little bit of the waxy residue where it's been melted out after that process. So that wax then goes back into being reused and into another mold but how they do this they put essentially a cylinder that is exactly 45.95 millimeters so they know that every single bottom bracket comes out perfectly and it's perfectly aligned so unlike normal pre-preg frames where they have to make two sides of a mold and fold them together and that's where you end up with misalignment and how all the layers have been laid up by someone by hand. What we do find with these is after the painting process, they often get refinished. So right now, if I just grab my little 45.95 gauge, you'll see that is a nice, perfect fit. Like literally couldn't be better. That is absolutely beautiful fit. If we grab our bore micrometer, exactly 45.95. Now, after it comes out of the paint shop, it then goes through another level of quality control and these are often finished to exactly 46 millimeters so when we get these in rtp ready to paint um tom who, who's going to be painting this for us he'll mask all this off but before we build it for the customer we'll then go back and finish that to 46 millimeters before we put any sort of bottom bracket in there as well so it's always nice you've got that good starting point if you are going to buy these yourselves it is still absolutely fine 45.95 is absolutely perfect way better than any other frame you're going to get but sometimes it is nicer to bring it up to a slightly bigger size especially if you're going to be putting something like a hambini bottom bracket in there so let's take a closer look at this bottom bracket area because if we use our ipa to spray we can see where these joins are so just here underneath the front mech mount and just here there's a change in that carbon so this is where 
this is all made out of one piece on that wax mandrel. And then we have our seat post is made. There's another join just here and another join just here. So we have this little piece around here where the seat post is, a really intricate piece. And you can see how this has been stitched together around here. And this has been shaped and sanded and made to be absolutely perfectly smooth. It's really lovely. The down tube is a piece from about here to about here. That's where our next join is. And the top tube is the bit that's quite often exposed on time frames. They normally leave this top tube exposed and you can normally see this join and this join. And therefore our head tube is from about here to about here. Again, perfectly finished. So yeah, it's actually quite a modular frame. It's definitely not what they'd call monocoque. It's actually made up of a series of different parts. So you've got your head tube piece, your bottom bracket piece, your seat tube piece. Um, this means that when they're doing those wax mandrels, these are actually fairly standard components. And when you buy the different sizes, it's the top tube, the down tube, the seat tube that change. And then when you buy the different models, it is the rear triangle and the fork that changes. So it's a very sort of economic way of making a frame, I guess. It kind of reduces how many molds and how much you can do, which when you buy a time frame, actually, the lead times are quite small because generally speaking, they get the order in, they have various parts ready to go and then they sort of have these frames almost ready to paint. They put color runs through a paint shop. So sometimes you can be waiting three to four weeks because those frames are made in Slovakia and they've got most of those parts ready to go and they can change their factory run quite quickly to adapt to what needs to happen. Whereas when you buy something like a look, for instance, and I know that a few of our customers are watching this who are still waiting for their look bikes, it can take sometimes four to five months for those bikes to actually come into production. So slightly different manufacturing process, which is much easier to scale to the demand that's going on. Okay, quick look at this front fork because I know that Grant from GEC Performance had a little bit of trouble with this. Now, there's almost no way that it can actually be wrong because of that way that they're using a wax mandrel going into a mold, it's almost impossible. But I can see how um, paint build up because they make this to such a fine tolerance, there's hardly any gap here at all. And if I just put a brake on here, you can see how tight that is. Now, if you have a hold down one side of this, you shouldn't see a gap appear on the other side. Now, they've already filled these with a little bit of wax to help with the painting process, which is lovely to see. It saves a job with um, Tom and having to mask everything off. But I strongly suspect that what happened at GC Performance was a little bit of a build up here of the lacquer, because they really do put a generous layer of lacquer on these. Generally speaking, personally, of all the ones that we built, I've never had a problem with this. So hopefully Grant was just a little bit unlucky. Now, to quickly on the back, this is a rear brake mount. And again, I have to say on time, when they come ready to paint like this, they're absolutely perfect. And you can really clamp these down. The brake mounts are in great condition, but the, how they mask them off in the factory probably isn't as good as how well Tom masks them off when he's painting them. And we sometimes just have a little bit of resin overrun that we just have to remove. It's never like we need to face it. It's normally just a tiny little bit of resin that we just need to remove to get a perfectly flat interface. If you're running the 140 millimeter rotors, never a problem. But if you're running an adapter, you sometimes just have to remove a little bit of, of the clear coat. So. so yeah, we've developed quite a lot of experience building these frames and every single one that we build is an absolute pleasure. And we love getting these ready to paint ones because we can really see like the, the craft work that went into this. Someone in that Slovakian factory really did build this with a lot of love, care and attention. How they get packaged up in the boxes is lovely. It's just one of those products that you really enjoy undoing. It comes with a little package of all the stuff that you need. It even comes with like a bike cover um, as well. They're an absolute joy to work on. Riding them, they are so stiff. I mean, you can see just like, how stiff these are <laughs> like try and flex that on your like latest and greatest sla and it'll flex like no end and the forks are the same um they're so so stiff this transfers into a really really confidence inspiring ride but where you expect it to be really really harsh you don't get that it's just the dyneema that's built into this carbon and the kevlar that's built into the fork just somehow seems to absorb it like witchcraft they are quite amazing to ride Anyway, I think that's enough of me waxing lyrical about these frames. They've just launched a whole new paint range as well, which is lovely. They've taken away those white logos and just done like the clear carbon showing through the time logo, which is something the boys downstairs actually asked for when we first started selling these. It's great to see that. I think it really looks smart and sophisticated. And there is always the option of ready to paint. You pay a little bit less to have your bike like this, but then you can offset that towards the cost of getting it custom painted. So we're working with a local frame painter called Big Lit Customs we had on the channel before. He's done some amazing work. This is gonna go and get custom painted and we'll show you what this comes out like fairly soon. But that painting cost is somewhere between 450 to 600 pounds. 
So you can get something very, very custom to you for not much more than the actual painted timeframes themselves. That is definitely an appealing option.